Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we'll be talking about lit code problem 45. It's called Jump Game 2. So let's look at the description. Given an array of non negative integer nums, you are initially positioned at the first index of an array. Each element in the array represents your maximum jump length at that position. Okay, your goal is to reach the last index in a minimum number of jumps. You can assume that you can always reach the last index. All right, let's look at the example 23114, and the output is 2 because the minimum number of jumps to reach last index is 2, which is the fourth index. Jump one step from index 0 to 1, so from here to here, and then three steps to this. Because you can, if it's given to you as a 2, you can jump like here or here but we pick three because three will give us the next big jump two all the way down to four so there is two jumps so they just return two another example is two three zero one four uh two then you can jump to three or here and we want to pick the one that's best so let's pick three and then reach to the four so two jumps output is two perfect so let's switch it over to the whiteboard to understand how can we go about solving this. So there are multiple ways we can solve this problem. One is the dynamic programming approach. Another one is the greedy search. Let's look at the dynamic programming first. So in the dynamic programming, we have a couple of approaches we can take. One is the top down approach with some memorization technique. Or another one is the bottom up approach where it's more iterative, where you calculate your sub problems first and then use that to calculate your goal. So let's look at the top down example. So for top down approach, we start at our goal and our goal is to get to the index four. Note that this is an index. So the strategy we're going to take for this problem is that we're going to ask each indexes that appear before four if there is a way to get to four with just one jump and we're going to ask that to all the indexes that appear before four so in this case we're going to ask all these indexes so let's start with the zeroth index can we reach to the four with just one jump answer is no so we skip what about this one can we reach to the four from index one the answer is just because three plus one can reach to the four with just one jump so we're just going to put that down here as one of the path we can take and what about we ask the next one can we reach to the four with just one or jump nope what about three and yes from three plus one is four so you could reach to four from index three so we're going to put that as our recursion call so now we're going to ask the same question from index one to all the indexes below one so so we start at the zeroth index can we reach to one from zeroth index the answer is yes because zero plus two is two so you could reach to one so we can traverse through that and we can no longer go to anywhere from zeroth index because that's our starting point so that would be one path and we know that each arrow is a one jump so we can say that from one side it returned two and we still have to calculate the other side where it's three and now let's look at all the indexes that happened before three which is zero one and two zero one and two and if there is any indexes that can reach to index three with just one jump so uh we're gonna ask zero index a question can you reach to three answer is no because zero plus two is two so you cannot reach there. What about index one? Can you reach to the three? Index one can definitely reach there. One plus three, you can go all the way up to four. So yes, index one can reach there. What about index two? Can you reach to three? Yes, two plus one is three, so you could reach there. And now we can see that we are having some repetition on the recursion calls. Uh, we already calculated that you can reach to one by just doing one jump from zero 
so we don't need to do the calculation again so that's why the memoization technique comes into place so but I'll just draw it out here just to represent the entire entire tree so for two we can ask the question to index 0 and 1 and in our case both of those indexes can reach 2 2 by doing one jump and then still we have to go from 1 we can reach 2 1 from 0th index so hopefully that makes sense and uh, it's just pretty much So now let's look at the right side's uh, jump counts. So one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. And we can already see that if you pick the even the shortest route, which is pretty much this one, it's still taking us three jumps. So we can say that the minimum number is the left tree in this case, which is just two jumps. So we can return two. So let's discuss the runtime complexity of this algorithm. So runtime for this. So we started at the index four and then we scanned each index that appeared before and the and we found out that there are a couple of other indexes one and three that could reach to four. So the thing is that at every index, if we wanted to know how many jumps it needs to take, we had to scan every index before that. So you can say that for every index, we had to scan every index that happened before index minus one, pretty much n minus one. So that would be the runtime complexity of this. And you can also represent this as O of n square. So hopefully a dynamic programming approach do make sense to you guys. Now let's jump into the greedy. Okay guys, to understand greedy approach, I've taken a little bit different example to work with. So in this example, I've given you guys the best jumps on the right side of the screen right here. It's the 0 to 1, 1 to 5, and 5 to 7. That's how we're going to jump to get to our goal. And we can return 3 as our jump count because it needed one jump right here, one jump right here, one jump right here. All right, cool. So how did I get to this answer? Let me draw a di uh, little table to uh, explain it a little bit better. Uh, let's start at zero because that's where we have to start and we have to reach to at least of index seven. When I say at least is at least what that means is that you can even reach to eight but in that case, you can still reach to seven. So that would be our goal. So we are starting at zero. Let me switch a different pen. We are starting at zero index. And, <clears throat> and we're going to ask a question. Hey, what's the max we can reach from zero index? So we look at the index zero and we say that zero index is zero plus two, which will give us two. So from zero index, you can reach to max of two. And we're gonna ask a question here. Hey, is the two our goal? And the answer is no, two is not the goal because our goal is to reach to the seventh index. So we need to make one more jump after you reach to two. So would that be wise to jump from zero to two? And the answer is no, because we already know the best jump, best jumps right here, it goes from zero to one. So let's put the zero back in here sorry, two back in here from zeroth index, you can do the max jump at the index two. And what are the potential jumps you could have made from zeroth index to two, two? So potential jump would have been one or two. Those are the indexes. So you could have jumped to index one or you could have jumped to index two. So now we need to pick one of those, which will give us the next best reach. So let's see a one, if we would, if we pick one, what would be the next best jump that we can take from one? One is if you look at the index one, uh, the, the value at index one is four. So we can say that one plus four will give us the five. So we know that one will give us five. And what about index two right here? The so two, if you look at the value at index two, which is just one, so one, two plus one is three. 
So we know that one is going to give us a higher jump than two. So we can't jump at one from index zero. So that's what uh, we determined that we're going to jump from index one. Okay, let me undo that. Okay, so I'm just going to draw another line right here. And we're going to say I'm going to jump from one. And now notice that when we go from one row to another, there is a jump right here. So I'm going to denote one jump right here. So we jump to zero to one. And now we're going to ask the same question. Hey, what's the max you can reach from one? And the max you can reach from one is five. Okay, is the five our goal? And the answer is no. So we need to keep on finding uh, we need to find all the potential jumps that we can make from index one right here. So the, all the potential jumps would be two. Well, you can include two, three, four, and five, but I'm going to exclude two because we already scanned the potential jump that we can make from two, which is not greater than uh, one. So we're just going to skip two at this point. So I'm just going to put three, four, five. And now we're going to do the same logic here. So we're going to investigate at index three and we're going to ask, okay, what's the best you can do from index three? Index three, you can see the value is one. So the best you can go is to index four from index three. What about index four? The best you can do from index four is to go to the index six. And what about index five? The best we can do from index five is to go to index eight. So we're going to have to pick the one that gives us the greatest result. And that index is five right here. So we're going to jump to index five. Sorry, let me just keep using the same pan. Index five. Now, what's the max reach from index five? The max reach from index five is eight. Now we're going to ask the same question. Hey, is eight the final goal and answer is yes because we could jump to eight then we could have jumped to seven as well so if we see the max reach is greater than or equal to our goal we can conclude that uh, we could just jump straight up to our goal uh, with just one jump so we can see here that we needed one jump from one to five and we needed one jump from five to eight so that is our jump count one, two, and three. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And let's just see how we can go about implementing this from this table right here. So we can see that we started at index zero. We looked at its max. Max wasn't the a uh, goal, so we scanned every index in between one and two, and then we incremented our jump count. We keep track of the next max, and then we scan every index that we haven't scanned yet, which is three, four, five. So you can kind of see there is one, two, three, four, five. So we can we can create some sort of loop that goes through one, two, three, four, five, and it will increment the jump as soon as we reach to the max from a index that we are working on. So let's jump into the code and try to implement it to make it more clear. All right, guys, let's implement the solution here. So we're going to start out with some of the cases where you cannot jump at all. And those cases are if the nums length is less than or equal to one. That means there is only one index and you cannot jump anywhere from that. Or the nums at zeroth index, there is no jumps from zeroth index. So in those cases, we just want to return zero jump counts. OK, so let's uh let's see how many variables we're gonna need so we already know that we're gonna need jumps we're gonna need a max so the max we're starting out with the zeroth index so the we're gonna fill it up with the zeroth index's max in our case you can already see the test case i've defined down here uh which will be two in our case for the starting max and we're gonna also need some sort of a scan indexes which we already looked at in the graph earlier that it starts at one two three four five six and so on and so forth so let's uh, run a loop 
and we're gonna call that a scan index. We're gonna start at one, where scan index is less than or equal to. Uh, we're just gonna say less than length minus one, and the scan index plus plus. Okay, so. I don't know what happened my screen frozen okay so if we can reach to the maximum and our maximum is our goal then we can just increment our jump count and we can return so if max is greater than or equal to our goal which is nums.length minus one if that's the case we can just say the jumps equal plus plus and we return the jumps right Otherwise, we need to scan indexes. And how many indexes are we gonna scan? We're gonna scan all the way up until the current max, right? So we are looking at zeroth index. We wanna scan all the way up until index two. So we are already on an index one. So we need to keep track of the next max. So we're gonna introduce another variable. We're gonna call it a next max. And we're gonna start out with a zero because next max, which will be always greater than two uh, in our case from the zeroth index. So uh, the next max will equal to math.max uh, nums at scan index plus the scan index or the next max itself and if we ever reach the scan index ever hits the current max uh, equal to the current indexes max so we're gonna replace the max with our next max and we're gonna increment our jump counts so I think that should uh, do the trick and let me just return jumps here now let me zoom out of here let me just run this for our use case that we discussed earlier and it should give us three there you go and i'm just gonna submit it now oops it fails for the case when there is one and two so what are we missing oh sorry we don't want to go all the way uh, we want to go all the way to the last index and not skip the last index. So let me submit it now. There you go, guys. Uh, well, thank you for watching. If you have any other questions that you want me to discuss, please put it in the comment section. And uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, thank you, guys. Have a nice day. Bye.